to maximize the time for anybody in the audience to make a comment, raise a question, uh, we should, we're going to not break and move right into public comments. And so there is a roving microphone. Um, somebody, who has the mic? Can I see who has the microphone? Okay. Can you, so people don't have to crawl over each other? I can't hear you. Yeah. And if, if you would oh, keep, keep your comments brief, I would be very appreciative because if you don't, I'm afraid I have to m make time for others. So He's going to keep the timer? What did you say? Oh, you mean to move it up? Uh, so, okay. Just give us one moment, please. So we're like sending you a finite time for each? Uh, yeah, I think they are. Good idea. Yeah. I hadn't heard. What is it, two minutes? One and a half minutes. Okay. We've been timing, keeping all of our speakers to time, too, and that's the apparatus. Quite a line. Pardon? Um, if I can clarify. We had a number of people who asked to speak, and we had a public sign-in at the front table as we communicated throughout the past few weeks with people who asked to speak. Consequently, to all of you wonderful people in line, I am sorry to say I'm going to go in order of this list. So everybody could actually just sit down, please, and I will call the list, and I will bring this to you, okay? Thank you so much. Sometimes 20 people. Yeah. 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 Please, please um, Val, Val, start. Val. And I ask each person after Val calls you and you come up, if you could just introduce yourself to us, we would be very appreciative of that. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so the first person I have is Michael S. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Michael Shaney Falk. I'm from uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Um, um, uh, the question that I brought to the board is that uh, in 2000 I was approached by an ex-Navy sub-diver, uh, and uh, he brought to my attention the use of an auditory weapon that he stole from the United States Navy. Yeah. He told me about this weapon that he stole from the Navy. And he told me how the weapon would affect the central nervous system of a human. And he wanted me to go out and assist him in certain things. And in 2006, I, my life changed. I started, I woke up one night and I got a strong electrical shock in the center of my chest. From that, I started uh, to have problems with my heart. I started having about Jiminy's, irregular rhythms. Went in and uh, to the hospital. The doctors determined that I was getting electrical shock through the, my chest. Then I went in and had an operation done, oblation. And all this is just keeps going on. From then, it went to my lungs. Then from there, it went to my kidneys. From there, it went to my bladder. From there, it went to my colon. And it keeps going on and on and on. Medically, I've been looked at and reviewed over and over and over again. My brother, he's a doctor. My sister, she's a nurse. My nephew's a nurse. And I've, I've got people that have talked to me about medical situations and medical views. And I know exactly what's occurring is wrong, and I feel like I'm a test subject. And I've uh, responded to the government, and the government responded back to me. But I have not seen no action. I've given you all a report, and you all can look at the letters that I've sent in. Charles Schatz. Charles Schatz. Thank you. My name is Gerald Schatz, and I'm a lawyer and retired uh, professor of uh, assistant professor of uh, ethics and law at Michigan State University. I want to address two things very quickly. 
One is the theme of vulnerability and its recognition. We have gone from an era of very reflective and I think very decent uh, recognition of the moral obligations of researchers to an era of discussion of regulatory burden. I think that's unseemly. The second point is that there is law out there. The bioethics community has been oblivious to it, but there is international law. There is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the United States ratified in 1992, and it makes informed consent an absolute requirement, no exceptions, not even in emergencies, subject to those normal legal fictions of consenting for the incapacitated patient to medical care and so forth. Uh, additionally, the Geneva Conventions and additional protocols to the Geneva Conventions make uh, research very, very difficult uh, or prohibited altogether for those individuals who are caught up in war and armed conflicts. Michigan State University faculty responded to the OHARP request for comment uh, in 2005 on equivalent protections. I will be pleased to provide that comment and those citations and some additional materials to the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sina Ryan. Thank you very much. My name is Sina Ryan. I am an Iranian American. been living here since 1976. To answer the question to the chair lady that if it is still going to happen or is still going on, I will assure you that it is still experimentation going on and one of life is standing right here. I strongly believe that I have been targeted for the experimentation of a brain research since September 2008. Without my consent, they are controlling my mind and using electronic remote control device to send instruction to send instruction. In the past two and a half years, I have been subjected to constant electric shock, a sleep disturbance, a sleep deprivation, short but severe localized pain in my very uh, into various parts of my body, telephone and bell rings in my ears, heat waves through my body, horrifying dreams, creating sudden fear and, worry and worries in my mind. They do these mostly when I am inside my apartment, but sometimes all this happens some of this happens when I'm outside without I'm seeing anybody or any device. This experimentation are done to me without any touch or anything, any, any, see anybody. This inhuman and painful method of torture include reading my, my, my thought and memories. Through this, they have, they have been able to control me and subject me to severe pain that I have been suffering for the past 29 months. My health has deteriorated during this time and I have no medical insurance to seek medical help. My life is in danger and I need your help from, from the government. I am, I am only asking them to stop this painful torture and leave me alone so I can go back to my life. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. John Hall. My name is Dr. John Hall. I'm a medical doctor from Texas. Um, as I understand the memorandum from the president, it's for you to determine if current legislation is adequate in uh, protecting individuals and if there's any ongoing experimentation. Uh, in reviewing the common rule, uh, it's very obvious that there's a lot of loopholes to inform consent. All of the horrific experiments you've mentioned, uh, Willowbrook, MKUltra, radiation experiments, mostly were done without informed consent. Uh, they were funded by the DOD and intelligence agencies 
where I'm not even so sure you would know if there's an IRB, much less if an IRB is looking at informed consent. Um, as a physician, um, relative to some of what you're hearing today um, in the community, we are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons. Uh, microwave auditory effects, silent sound spectrum, EEG cloning, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. Uh, it seems to be more weapons research than medical research. Um, I personally corresponded with upwards of 1,500 victims all complaining of identical complaints from every state in the nation. Um, of being exposed to electromagnetic radiation, um, non-ionizing radiation for the use of cognitive control or behavior control. Um, I've submitted a, a paper to you, and there's a, another paper submitted to each member from another physician in Kansas City um, alluding to the same thing. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Hall? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Millicent Black. No, oh, madam. My name is Millicent Black. I'm from Tennessee. Possibly a transgenerational uh, person whose family members have been used for at least three generations, and I'm the second uh, second one. My dad possibly was the first one who was admitted to a uh, Nashville hospital with a pineal gland tumor, uh, left there with a plate in the back of his head, not the front of his head, where his pineal gland would have been. Uh, at his death, I sought, well, actually before his death, I sought legal counsel for some horrendous treatment he had received at a nursing home that was also partnering with that uh, hospital in Nashville, only to find out that a judge told the attorneys to drop that case. Um, I am a part of the group that's here today representing those who are receiving the electromagnetic torture, um, and even my daughter at five months old was referred to that same Nashville hospital after having been refused treatment at the local hospital. I believe she is also a victim of the electromagnetic torture. Where does it stop? When are we re-given our rights as humans and as citizens? Does being African Americans qualify as non-black or non-white and non-American citizens or non-American people? We seem to have a double bind going. Thank you. Mr. Marshall, or Mrs. Marshall. Good afternoon. My name is Connie Marshall. I'm a former mayoral candidate from Louisville, Kentucky. I have never been involved in any criminal activity. I found a document in my bank account that said, problem with Kentucky government, check federal government paperwork and file before releasing information to anyone. I am an eight-year victim survivor of assaults by directed energy weapons. The torture I've experienced consists of body overheating, body extremely cold, seizures, heart pain, ear aches, itching behind eyes, burning behind eyes, swelling, headaches, involuntary movement of my limbs, exhaustion, speeding and heart racing, hair coming out by the handfuls as if I've had chemotherapy, mind paralysis, being hypnotized or placed in a trance-type state, being tracked by a drone or satellite, controlled dreams, sleep deprivation, V2K, which is voice to skull, projected sound, extreme muscle spasms, and extreme muscle cramps, being made to fall down, blue circles around the pupils of my eyes, and I'm here and you can look at them if you like, low frequency noises in my home, high frequency noises in my home, sexual stimulation, numerous electrical appliances in my home are destroyed, four computers, two fax machines, seven telephones, four CD players, VCR, DVD players, electrical igniter switch on my furnace, washer and dryer, air conditioner, also my car radio, CD player, and engine were destroyed. I am watched in my home 24 hours a day and followed, followed around everywhere I go, though I do not have a criminal history. When I ran for mayor in my town, I was also attacked at debates and forums. My website is www.justiceforallcitizens.com. Thank you. And I would like to leave these flyers with you all as well. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alan Hornsblum. My name's Alan Hornblum. I'm a Philadelphia-based author who has written books on things running the gamut from organized crime to Soviet espionage. Uh, but for the purposes of this meeting, I've written two books on the history of using prison inmates as test subjects. You may be familiar with one or both of them. I'm working with a couple colleagues now on the history of using institutionalized children as test subjects for research, and I can assure you some of the material I'm finding is quite astounding, including the fact that Nobel Prize winners went to uh, institutions for the feeble-minded to use them as test subjects. And in interviewing people over the years, not just test subjects, which I do on a regular basis, but also the doctors who initiated these uh, experiments, these clinical trials, uh, I'm talking about people like Konstantin Malektos and Albert Kligman and Hilary Kraprowski, Chester Southam, some of the top researchers of the 20th century. Most of them are famous and some are infamous. It's remarkable that almost all of them articulate how little medical ethics was taught in medical schools at the time. And I had to bring up, uh, I, I had to educate one of them, in fact, about the Nuremberg Code. When I mentioned it, he wasn't even familiar with it. These problems with regard to medical ethics are still there. I periodically give talks at universities and med schools, and uh, it's, it's stunning to me that when I go into a bookstore at the university and go in, maybe I'll see one of my books there. Of course, I'm a little bit uh, disturbed when they don't, but I also don't see anything by Harriet Washington or by James Jones, Bad Blood, or by Jonathan Moreno's book. Medical ethics is an orphan in today's medical arena. It is out there in left field. They really de-emphasize it, and that's part of the continuing problem that doctors, as, as Dan said earlier when they do these studies, it's a cost-benefit analysis, and there's much more benefit to doing research, even when it breaks rules and laws and cuts corners, than by following the rules. And that's why I believe the commission has to make a very strong condemnation of Dr. Cutler and the institutions and doctors that he worked with, not just with regard to uh, Tuskegee and Guatemala, but there are so many other incidents and events out there. As Susan said, we will continue to discover these. There will be another commission like yours in 10 years going over what you didn't look at or what you didn't do. So I would encourage you to be as aggressive as possible, not just describe what happened, but really condemn those who broke the law because there's doctors making decisions right now and those decisions are going the wrong way. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Deborah Poulsen or Deborah Paulson? Hi, I'm Deborah Paulson from Kenosha, Wisconsin. I'm going to refer to a paper from Professor McCoy at the University of Wisconsin on no touch torture. He talks about a total assault on all senses and sensibilities auditory, visual, tactile, temporal, temperature, and survival, refined through years of practice. Sensory disorientation relies on a mix of sensory overload and sensory deprivation via banal procedures, isolation, then intense interrogation, heat and cold, light and dark, noise and silence, for a systematic attack on all human stimuli. I've been a um, human subject for experimentation for almost two years, and I stand with, I've contacted Dr. Hall, I stand with a very large group, Excuse me, I'm very nervous, but I'm very tired of um, having my rights taken away. And thank you for hearing me, and thank you for the others. If I would like some help. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lisa Becker. Sorry, pardon me. Thank you. My name is Lisa Becker. I am also from Wisconsin. I have been a non-consenting test subject in military medical ex research. Um, I, too, believe my experience is referred to as no-touch torture, utilizing defense technologies. Um, Jonathan Marino, he basically predicted all this uh, a number of years ago in his book, Un 
undue risk, um, I'm asking you to help initiate a congressional investigation. Uh, we've all come a long way. This is what is needed. Uh, we want to have the accounts of this extreme human rights abuse that's going on in our country uh, documented and heard, all of the accounts. Uh, we also need what was done during the Clinton administration, which is a major declassification of some of these documents that are hiding what's been going on. Um, I speak for many when I say we've suffered long enough. My personal experience has been 10 years. I've been vilified. I've been ostracized. I've been tortured. I have burns on my body. I'm an American. I have rights. The answer to the question, the big question today, could it happen today? The answer is yes. It is happening today. It is happening for some of us every day. I am begging for you to help us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James Wallet. Walbert. My name is James Walbert. Uh, to date, I have one of the strongest cases documented of these unethical violations against our society. Uh, due to the facts of having the kinds of professionals that I have involved with this case, I have been able to prove that this crime against others and myself is real and shows, concern, uh, shows reason to be concerned with. I am in hopes that I am able to prove the same thing to this committee. And by the introduction of the evidence that I have to introduce to the committee, I and the professionals that are standing with myself in this crime would like for this committee to consider uh, the introduction of these documents with the growing concern of this crime to the President for his review. With these hopes in mind for this consideration, I would also like to ask of this committee to consider an investigation into these unethical violations of others and myself that are affected by this crime. With this consideration of this investigation uh, request into these matters, I would also like to point out the abuses of children that have been documented by the many professionals that I am currently working with into these matters of this crime. To date, the professionals have been documenting these offenses against the children that are related to the many victims of these uh, crimes. They have been, uh, proven this concern to be valid, as I am pointing out to this committee, the growing concern of fellow states that have now passed laws against forced chipping of an RFID tracking chip. Uh, these states that have now passed such bills into law, Colorado House Bill uh, 071082, North Dakota Senate Bill 2415, Oklahoma State Senate Bill 47, House Bill 072092, Missouri House Bill 550, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Bill, Georgia Senate Bill 235, and uh, the list just goes on. Um, I was also like wanting to ask if I could uh, provide a portfolio of, of introduction of 12 professionals from political support to medical investigations, as well as private investigative support to the committee as well for review. May, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Peter Rosen. Hi, I'm Peter Rosenholm. I'm from Rhode Island. Uh, like all the others, we go through this every day. I'm at least 14 years now of being tortured. Uh, it's non-consensual human experimentation. It's remote. It's covert. Uh, it's hard to prove it a lot of times. Uh, many of my attacks were microwave weapons. Medusa is one. Uh, in all the hospital statements when I was hospitalized, I told of being hit by radiation weapons, uh, that I could hear voices. Medusa now admits to all those capabilities. I'm also in the Naval War College's Congressional District, and I've got falsely diagnosed, drugged. I've pretty much uh, proven all that wrong. I'm off all the medication, but I'm still tortured. Uh, it goes on every day, and it goes on every day for all these people. What I would like is for us to have a participation on your committee, for someone from our group to actually participate. I'm wondering if that's possible. Because we're, we're the victims. We're like the Guatemalans who are tortured. Is there a chance that that can happen? Did you hear me? Uh, you're is there a chance that uh, a group or an individual from us can be on the committee? We're, we're constituted by the president as a commission and have 
you are, we have public comment and you can write us and we will read everything you give us. Right. It's well, the president who, President Obama appoints the commission. The other thing we deal with is like a COINTELPRO attack. Law enforcement uh, attacks us, dis discredits us. We'll put us in a mental hospital if we try too hard. Uh, these people all don't want to go to doctors. The Patriot Act has provisions where doctors have to follow what they say. So a lot of these people aren't getting their teeth fixed, aren't going for medical care. Uh, we're in a bad situation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Rhodes, Iran's. Mr. Kenneth Rhodes. Ms. Letitia per Peter Peters. Madam Chair, members of the bio Bioethics Committee. Yes, members of the you. Bioethics Committee. My name is Letitia Peters. I'm from Trent, New Jersey. I was a federal government employee working 16 years as an electronics engineer right here in Washington, D.C., where I got sick due to toxic mold exposure. And when I started complaining about it and using my rights, I, I believe now, after five years of being out of the government, after 16 years of service, that I was put into this 24-7 execution chamber. And I, too, am looking for congressional investigations. I should be covered under the Whistle Protection Blowers Act. And I, too, would like to submit documentation, which I presented. And I have been denied medical treatment. I have been disregarded as being non-human. Um, all my rights have been violated. My parents and I are living together now in Trenton, New Jersey. And there are low-flying aircrafts dropping biological weapons over our houses every day in order to try to kill me. And I just want to demonstrate some of the evidence that I have and provide to you because I've been trying to get to the president, but I know all of my information has been rerouted. So I, too, am requesting a congressional investigation as well. And may I present this information to you? Yes, may. Thank you very much. Ms. Tammy Battaglia. Hi, my name is Tammy Battaglia. I've been enrolled in psychological experiments on the record since the age of 13 without my consent. I've spent many years recovering from experimental hypnosis, physical and biological testing that I've undergone during decades of tests conducted by government-funded doctors, corporate think tanks, and researchers. I've experienced tremendous loss and trauma over the years of subjection to non-consensual experimentation, which has been devastating to my life. The people conducting experiments on other human beings do not consider the horribly destructive ramifications that they're subjecting victims to. As a result, there is no rehabilitation after experiments. No consideration is given to the often severe psychological and physical trauma suffered by non-consensual test subjects almost continuously. Many victims, such as myself, are diagnosed with non-existent mental illnesses, and as a result, we are expected to take dangerous medications that we do not need. There's no way to seek justice for what we've endured, because in America, the land of the free, justice is not free. The experiments violate every right imaginable and offer no restitution whatsoever. If myself or any other victim approaches law enforcement, our government agencies were spurned and in some cases forcibly taken to mental institutions. I've not consented to be experimented on by any branch of the government, military, or members of the American Medical Association. The initial experiments unfolded from decisions that were made for me when I was a child at a time when I was unable to understand what I was being volunteered for or what the consequences would be. I deserve to be vindicated and released from these experiments immediately, as do all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rose Gopinski. Uh, Amy, I, I love your question of us to try to figure out what the big problem is. 
uh, to really analyze and get to the root of it. And uh, I thought at first it was containment, which leads to things like false flags to confuse people. It leads to harassing people to discredit them, disable them, uh, the, the TIs that is, the victims. Um, it leads to possible corruption, uh, the secrecy, um, possible uh, fear for, uh, of going to prison on the people that are on the part of the people that are uh, executing these things. Um, and then I realized underneath the containment, the secrecy dash containment umbrella, is a really glaring uh, inability of the U.S. to ever apologize for anything. Um, to be able to just uh, say, I'm sorry. The rest of the world is waiting for us to say, I'm sorry, or I admit to something. I have flaws. Everyone does. And when it, contrary to the Pentagon myth that you can, should not do that to be strong, contrary to that myth, uh, it makes a person stronger. Therefore, it will also make a uh, country stronger. Other countries would very much appreciate it. Say, you know, I'm sorry, two seconds of silence, and then we can go on with, with life. Thank you. Mr. Jeremy Radlar. My name is Jeremy Radlow. I'm uh, here to tell you that non-consensual human experimentation is happening in the United States today. I've been the subject of this experimentation for more than my five years. Calling these ex activities experimentation is truthful, but possibly distracting. I think the criteria governing the selection of experimentees will prove to be a much bigger scandal than the experimentation itself. The psychological torture protocol that's part of the so-called experimentation includes, but is not limited to, the use of non-lethal weapons and mind invasive technology. Sleep deprivation, pain center stimulation, and worse are used against subjects. While some experimentees have found foreign objects in their bodies suggesting implantation, most have not. Receiverless mind invasive technology has been demonstrated under laboratory conditions but the most likely explanation is that experimentees are implanted with foreign objects either too small to appear on commercially available scanning equipment or designed to be indistinguishable from the surrounding tissue. These activities are highly deceptive, use clandestine technology, and have the fingerprints of the CIA all over them. It's unreasonable to expect isolated individuals receiving this treatment to furnish proof. A thorough investigation is warranted. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Ms. Catherine Nestor. My name is Catherine Nestor and I'm from Pennsylvania. This commission has spoken of a long history of abuse of the human research subject. Although no one mentioned MKUltra today, President Clinton recently apologized for this. My young child and I have been used as non-consensual test subjects. We have been subjected to COINTEL Pro-like stalking, remote neural monitoring, and electromagnetic torture, resulting in psychological and physical damage. And I won't go into the details of that because I have four pages written in here that is very similar to Connie's testimony. Please do not wait 70 years to investigate this. I ask Dr. Amy Gutman to begin today. There is new work for the Commission for Human Subject Protection on our shores. And please give us a dramatic response, Susan, and please give us a congressional hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Miriam Snyder. Hello, my name is Miriam Snyder. I'm an educator, minister, human rights advocate. I work with many people that have suffered the ramifications of unregulated, deadly human research experimentation. Since I've 
brought this to the public, I've become a victim too. In fact, in the past I was. I have three questions I would like the Commission to answer and then I'd like to submit some recommendations so that we do not have to uh, go through this type of forum of listening, listening, and then we have to rush this serious assassination program. Human research experimentation is being used to assassinate innocent people, and I think it's time that it takes much more than two minutes to rush up. I resent it. I spent my time, I listened, and I asked that you listen. Foremost, since Guatemala and Tuskegee experiments, it is understood that human research experimentation via particularly injections on innocent people is understood that these things are going on. I would like the Commission to address what is being done to stop the continuance of non-verifiable injections being used on people. Uh, I'd like to know the Commission to address what penalties are and protections are in place for researchers, the incarceration of researchers who create deadly weapons and viruses. What is going to be done to stop the deadly created man-made viruses getting out the laboratory to human bodies? And when are we going to start incarcerating researchers? All right. Number three, who supervises energy technology, specifically electronic torture? That is a major issue. Just hold on. I waited two days. Electronic torture. All of these people are here talking about they are being tortured. They are in a slow kill program via radiation. The cleft lip babies are coming out through radiation programs. The studies show it. I've submitted documentation. We have cleft lip babies because of unregulated radiation studies. What is going to be done to stop this? These people are suffering because of unregulated radiation uh, studies, human re research experiments, and the funding is immense and people are dying. What's going to be done to stop it? Okay. With respect to neuroimaging, I found a tremendous amount of research regarding injection-induced seizures. Why, are, why, why is human research allowing experiments that allow injection-induced seizures? And uh, through electro, uh, electronic technology. Uh, now, what my recommendation. I would hope that this committee could launch a specific committee to address these issues uh, with human rights experts, genocide specialists, people who have studied mass murders, that it's understood that these things do happen, okay, through genocide, and I can give you a list of, of people that have documentaries on this, uh, and to, to uh, investigate the citizen complaints regarding mind control weapons, in particular energy technology via satellite, induced seizure via satellite, microwave auditory effect weapon, all government-sponsored psychological operations, microchipping through injections. Above all, we seek the creation of a means for injections to be verified before entering the human body. And prosecution for anyone using these deadly tactics to harm the people. And we seek compensation for all the victims who have filed affidavit after affidavit documenting the atrocities involved with unregulated and deadly human research experimentation that they have suffered as a direct result of these criminal human research and, uh, uh, and the uh, people, the whistleblowers who have exposed this. Thank you very much. And please have a forum where we don't have to do this rush up. I waited two days and I don't like being rushed like this. I really don't. Thank you very much. Mr. Nigel Nicholson. Hi, good evening. My name is Nigel Nicholson, and um, I have been in a psychological coercive uh, mind control program. This started in 2002, where I was falsely arrested, I was drugged, and I believe I was hypnotized. Soon after that, I was being harassed by the police department along with noise campaign that was being committed by the New York City Fire Department. I mean, for a whole year, every time I left my house, I was bombarded with noise, which led me to have a psychological breakdown. 
I've been job mobbed. I've been put into a what I call a, a, a assassination type program. Okay, I've been villainized. My friends has totally retreated from me, even though I have I've continuously reached out to them. Okay, I have been under what I, what I believe is neuro monitoring when I can think of something and go outside and somebody will walk by me and repeat what I just said, I know I'm not crazy. Okay, regardless of what, what, is being, what is being said, they make these pro, these, uh, the victims of these programs to be uh, you know, diagnosed with a psychological illness to hide these crimes. Because we all know that to discredit an individual, if you, could, if you give them a mental illness or diagnose them with a mental illness, no one is going to believe us. No one's going to believe you or I. And this is how they are hiding these crimes. Thank you, sir. Ms. Micheline Jones. Oh. Michaeline. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michaeline Jones. Um, I'm right here from D.C. I live in public housing, and I mention that because this is where most of the poor people are at, especially these days with the way the economy is going. I am the subject of MK Ultra mind control. I am also the subject of electromagnetic radiation, and I have many videos to prove it. I've taken these videos to newspapers and to various places, even including, um, what is that, CDC, and everyone has just turned away as if this is hush-hush. I've had lawyers deny me assistance because they said this is too big. So in research I found out that the former congresswoman Cynthia McKinney asked for a reinvestigation under, H, under her resolution HR 1026 um, to reinvestigate COINTEL activities. Uh, I am constantly stalked. There's many covert activities that have followed me. Um, sleep depri deprivation, um, I don't have that too much now because I force myself, uh, clocks, radios, too much liquids at nights, uh, whatever, just to get up and get out the house. Um, I've asked public housing from the executive director all the way down to fair hearing, which is still pending right now, to get me out of this place. But now I'm beginning to wonder, would it do any good? I've relocated three or four times, and I had a deputy officer or county officer tell me, this will follow you. So when they pick their subjects, this goes with you. I would like all of this, this medical uh, abuse to be um, investigated and, if possible, for you to get back with us. I didn't know about um, this meeting until yesterday, and I do appreciate your letting me um, have this time to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Mr. Timothy White. I'd like to thank the Commission for allowing uh, the public to address these issues. And it's been a, uh, a lot of information, and it's been very good and enlightening. And I see I'm in the right place to provide the information I have. And yes, uh, the Tuskegee experiments are still going on, and the Guatemala experiments are still going on. But they're going on because of the adv advances in the signals technology and in cognitive neuro, uh, neurological te technology and neurophysiological experimentation and research and advances in that technology is allowing these things to happen and creating a new class of vulnerabilities uh, for citizens who cannot protect themselves against this. Okay? We provide citizens who are currently non-consensual victims of cognitive neuroscience and neurophysiological research and experimentation, which is enabled remotely through extreme low frequency computer to brain entrainment technology. This technology exists and can be verified on subjects with a high degree of accuracy using current neural imaging technologies. Okay, this is an atrocity that go, has gone on for years. And like the Tuskegee experiments, it's clearly within the scope of this commission. Okay, the validity of this case, if there's any doubt as to the validity of these claims, that this, com this commission can conduct, can conduct its own independent investigation by using functional brain imaging techniques. Okay, we ask that the committee, just because of the existence of our organization, Freedom for Covert, covert Harassment and Surveillance Alone, we have thousands of people who have contacted us claiming to be victims of this. The justification for uh, 
our, our existence is justification that you should develop, you should uh, investigate this, this uh, occurrence further, okay? We need tests to develop, to determine if a citizen has been harmed by a cognitive weapon. Uh, these are cognitive weapons that uh, somehow these people are being experimented on with. And just overall, we need to ban the unethical use of science and technology on all citizens for any form, uh, for any reason and in any form. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, this is a minority of us. Um, approximately, let's say, I've spoken to probably 3,000 people. Um, he's on probably 1,500. He's on 5,000. There's a lot of us across the U.S. And there's certain statistics, I think, that if you find that there is something going on wrong, that that you're going on wrong, that you guys, that somewhere along the line somebody has to do an investigation. There's a certain percentage of illness um, you do a, an investigation. If there's a certain amount of cancers in an area, same as uh, Brockovich went and did the investigation, she found a certain amount. Well, we're presenting our case right now. You said you guys wanted to be in the know. We're giving you the information now so that you are in the know. There is something going on. It's electromagnetically. Um, um, issue and it has to do with from cell phones all the way to directed energy and I think yesterday some of the colleagues went ahead and said that we didn't really talk about whether um, there's energy weapons or not but I mean I, we have thousands and thousands of documentations about energy weapons themselves and all we're asking for is an investigation on this people are being harmed people are being tortured and people are being killed and I think it's a pretty important thing for a bioethic committee to look into. And all we ask today is to please do that. And Mark, on March 1st, 2011, we came to you and we told you. And I don't know how many more people. My friends are dead, tortured to death by electronic weapons. And I don't know how many more people will die. And I hope I will be here again if you have this next year. Thank you very much. I, that, that's the end of the list. Are we? That's the end of the list. Okay. One minute. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to do the best that I can while being hurt by a national defense weapon that our country built. I love our country, but I am in contact and have been with the chief of the Department of Defense Fraud, Waste, and Abuse Hotline. He's worked with me and my wife for two years. And he went to the Pentagon after we were air assaulted by a jet at 150 to 200 miles an hour, that being me and my wife. That's why my face is rebuilt. And she's at home taking care of 100 head of cattle with a brain tumor. I've had three removed. I guess my point would be this, is that I stood up to this program, and that would be the joint operations system that our country built with the non-lethal and less than lethal weapon system. And I'm the only one known in the world, besides the people that helped build this system, to have this actual pulse on camera and have caught it. And I would like to submit that disc. But I guess the one question I would have, it's okay, Eli, you don't have to beat me up to the microphone. The one question I would have is, first of all, I would like to submit this to you as promptly as possible and then ask each and every one of you that 90% of the people that approached you spoke the same way I am, scared, but also spoke. They're speaking of directed energy weapons. That was phased out with the non-lethal and less than lethal programs, and we all know that. Most of you do anyways. 
Would you please help save my life? Ma'am? I please submit what you have and we will do what we can. And, okay? and your name? My name? Yes, ma'am. Is Dr. Amy Goodman. Dr. Amy Goodman? I'm going to submit that to you. And please. if I die from this, then I, I'm, a, I'm quite sure somebody else will look at the evidence. Thank you for your time. Thank, panel. thank you. I appreciate it. This is the public comment session. Um, you know, the, the, a couple of process issues. First of all, to remind folks that uh, the Commission staff published an invitation uh, prior to this uh, meeting in the Federal Register inviting comment. I understand there was something on the order of 300 people who uh, wish to, uh, wished to offer comment. Uh, we'll obviously not get 300 in in the next uh, 45 minutes, but the, the plan is to ask uh, uh, in, f in fact, I think uh, responders or rather public uh, commenters have been notified and the plan is that uh, Mr. Juan Chuck back here will be, uh, has the list of folks that will be um, offering comment and uh, maybe the thing to do is to just uh, dive into that. I want to remind you before we do that the commission of course is charged by, uh, uh, charged by President Obama to be looking at uh, uh, bioethical issues generated by novel and emerging research in biomedicine and related areas of science and technology uh, and to promote policies and practices that assure ethical responsibility and remind you that the specific charge uh, on this meeting has been around uh, looking at on the topic of uh, federal standards regarding human, human subjects uh, research. So with that background uh, and the amount of time. Yeah, each person, I believe, has a minute and a half is, is the way we've been able to try to cram in as many, as, as many comments as possible. So, uh, Juan, if you're ready for the first. Uh... Ms. Cassandra Lewis. Hi, Ms. Lewis. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Cassandra Lewis, and I'm a targeted individual from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, my story um, may sound disjointed. I'm trying to keep it within the minute and a half. I worked as a legal secretary at Hogan and Hartson in Washington, D.C. It is now called Hogan Lovells. Attorney Jan McDavid made a client mistake that she tried to blame on me. I then refused to work for Ms. McDavid. Shortly thereafter, strange and inexplicable events occurred on my job and after being fired, followed me to my home and to all my travels. Attorney Christopher J. Hagan, formerly of Hogan and Hartson. Mr. Samuel Conrad, he's a retired security administrator of Hogan and Hartson. And Robert Johnston, who is the current firm administration, administrator of Hogan Lovells, are responsible for my targeting. I believe to protect Ms. McDavid's reputation, a phone call was made to whom and, and why they did this to me. I, 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 I truly just speculate. Gang stalking and harassment was used to implement this non-consensual biotechnology application that is being used on me. I now experience involuntary limb movements. I receive stingings. I get pains to my head, to my abdomen, to my vaginal area, and to my anal area. I am receiving from a language that I read concerning this technology, it is called Medusa, developed by the Navy, is being used on me. I get burning on my lower legs and my ankles. I get ringing in my ears that's uh, pitched. It's like they, they, they pitch it. I get pulsing sensations in my body. I get an electrical current, an electrical sensation that goes up and down through my body and can be uh, isolated to different parts of my body. I get severe tingling on the soles of my feet. I'm almost done. Um, it's almost like being electrocuted and the first time I experienced this was walking into a bank. Um, I get buzzing sensations on the soles of my feet and individual toes. I also get facial manipulations just to name a few of the things that happen to me. I feel as though I am being roboticized. Um, these are very strange occurrences, and I would like for all the targeted individuals in this room to stand up and to show yourself. Um, my story is similar to a lot of these people.
Mr. Eric Suba. Thank you. I'm, I'm a physician, and uh, cervical cancer prevention in developing countries is my life's work. I previously outlined um, my concerns in written form to Valerie Bonham and to Adam Michaels. Um, my concerns are regarding ongoing studies of cervical cancer prevention currently being conducted in India. These studies include uh, scientifically gratuitous control groups of unscreened women, um, and it includes scientifically gratuitous measurements of cervical cancer death rates among over 100,000 Indian women who are not being provided with any cervical cancer prevention services at all. Uh, the studies have been funded continuously since 1997 by the NCI and by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I'd like to offer a testable hypothesis that if these studies had been reviewed by any one of this afternoon's panelists, uh, they'd be found, without exception, to be unethical by each of the panelists. I'd also like to offer the testable hypothesis to the Commission that these ongoing Indian studies could serve as a valuable prism through which to identify improvement opportunities for human subjects' protections. And uh, finally, I'd like to offer uh, my own technical co consultative services to the, to the Commission, uh, as well as those of my colleagues in Vietnam and other developing countries, if the Commission should find a more grassroots perspective to be valuable. Thank you. Mr. Thomas McClelland. I'm 59 years old from New York uh, City. Um, I've been a vic victim of ongoing non-consensual human subject experimentation for my entire adult life and possibly may have been a victim since my childhood. I have been targeted with ongoing microwave weapons as well as drugging with neurotoxic contaminants covertly placed on articles of clothing as well as on other personal possessions. I believe my being a non-consensual human test subject is related to the CIA's MKUltra behavior modification program that began in the 1950s. Moreover, after I read a July 1963 CIA MKUltra report that became unclassified in 1994 and emphasized that it would be necessary to test unwitting citizens in their ordinary day-to-day -day activities you can without their knowledge in the final stage of the testing program I believe that I could be one of those many thousands of civilians that were unwittingly tested in the CIA's behavior modification program. <laughs> Getting the government to take action concerning acknowledgement and putting an end to unethical consensual human experimentation that has also been a part of our country's past history is of great concern to me. I believe that there could have been other members of my family that were victims also. And Thank you for your service. Mr. Brian Rung. Miss Anya Briggs? <coughs> My name is Anya Briggs, and I am a private citizen and resident of New York City. I have been and continue to be experimented on against my will and without my permission as a human test subject and as a targeted individual forced into trauma-based mind control programs. Because of this ongoing experimentation, torture, and abuse, since 2008 and before, I have endured the following physical and psychological symptoms. Extreme, debilitating, and chronic fatigue, weakness, and dizziness for days and weeks at a time. Lack of motor control as well as the sensation of being physically controlled by an unseen force. My left arm occasionally experiences pain and discomfort from an object of unknown origin moving under my skin and being activated somehow. 
I have an unusual dental filling of unknown origin on the side of one of my back upper right teeth and no memory of having this procedure done. And I have x-ray printouts and a signed affidavit from my dentist stating this. Mm. Said dental filling causes me sharp pain, discomfort, and sensitivity. I have experienced extreme itching, burning, and pain in my right leg that turned into an intense bright pink and that disappeared completely after several minutes, and I have photographs of this happening in real time. I have had a stretched uterus, and yet I have never consciously and to my knowledge been pregnant. I have had equidistant sores that have appeared on both of my subscapularis muscles at the same time. I have been drugged. I've been abducted from my home. I've had guns pointed at my head. I've had death threats. And much, much worse, believe it or not, by being in these programs and experiments. The after effects of this have made me socially avoidant most days, and it's extremely hard to establish relationships with people I can trust as a result of these abominations, and I thank the committee for hearing my statement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ken Rhodes? Juan, we are actually, I, I think if people are being so good about keeping the pace, and this is so stressful for many of them, we can allow them to slow down just a little bit, okay? This, this is important for them. My name is Ken Rhodes from Michigan. I'm here to tell you that the use of electronic weapons and mind control is helping the United States against the American people. You may think this will never affect you, but there will come a day when this will affect all of you, your children, their children, and every generation from this day forward. I'm here to speak for every person affected by these horrific crimes against humanity. I can't go. Thank you. If you want, if, Ken, if you want to get back in line uh, at some time and you want to finish that, that we would understand. What, what? Someone could certainly read it for him, yes. Thank you for doing that. And, and you are, I'm sorry? Uh, my name is Lisa Becker. Thank you, Lisa. I had the privilege to address you at the last commission meeting. I'm here to speak for every person affected by these horrific crimes against humanity by a tyrannical group of people committed to eugenics and population control. If you're not part of this inside group of tyrants, you are like all of us here today. Ask yourselves, have you forgotten what it is to be an American and to be brought into tyranny? You will soon learn what it is to be a slave. Allowing this to continue is allowing our rights and freedoms to be taken away from all of us, one right at a time. It's interesting how much technology exists that would find the criminals and the perpetrators of this heinous crimes of electronic harassment and terroristic tactics being used against innocent U.S. citizens on a daily basis. These technologies should be used for the betterment of our society. But you know what the most powerful weapon is in our arsenal that would put an end to these horrific crimes once and for all. It is someone giving a damn and correcting the things that are taking place. We have all gone to people who took an oath to protect and serve, who have been in commissions to investigate the unethical treatment of citizens in human experimentations. We have been denied protection and service and have been ignored by commission after commission. Enough is enough. This is America. We're supposed to be better than this. We all know what Hitler did to the Jewish people. When this all comes out, what the American government has done to their own people, it will make Hitler look like a saint. If some of you didn't get some morals... Thank you, but I'll finish. Well, you, then you don't understand what we're going through. If some of you don't get some morals or conscience, you will be... Need a, I'm sorry, I can't read the rest of it. Thank you. Ken and Lisa, thank you very much. I'm also a victim. I'm 67 years old from MK Ultra. Thank you. Thank you. We need a hearing on this. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Sandra Fields. In a way, I'm very sorry to address you like this because I think that what you're doing is very admirable. But I'm here to represent this other group, and I'm also targeted, and this is my story. My name is Sandra Field. I'm an architect. 
recipient of Who's Who of, America, of Women in America Achievement Award and have run a successful business for over 28 years. My life and livelihood have been compromised for the last 11 years by being attacked by electromagnetic radiation torture and by organized stalking. I cannot live in my rent-stabilized apartment in New York City as a result of this torture. I'm currently staying in motels and friends houses in the last year. Thousands of Americans are currently suffering from chemical, electromagnetic, psychological, and physical torture with no government relief or laws. Our servicemen, prisoners, and thousands of unknowing, innocent civilians are currently being lamed, tormented, and tortured as a result of military research, medical research, pharmaceutical research, physiological and psychological studies that have virtually destroyed participants' sanity, physical well-being, reputation, and privacy. Government projects like MKUltra and COINTELPRO are rumored to be active today with no update, with updated forms of surveillance and torture and technologies. In 2010, Morrison and Furster won the right to proceed with a case against the CIA, Department of Defense, and the U.S. Army for veterans' development of multiple diseases and ailments tied to a secret testing program in which the United States military personnel were deliberately exposed to chemical and biological weapons and other toxin toxins without informed consent. Sleep deprivation, poisoning, and high-frequency doses of continuous microwave pulses are inclined to increase one's chances for mental disorders, autism, arthritis, multiple sclerosis, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. The body's immune system is broken down. Their nervous system and the brain and spinal cord are attacked and maimed. There are no laws to prevent electromagnetic attacks except in Maine. The federal government does not acknowledge these crimes. There is no literature, educational resources, or assistance for victims. I would like to ask this committee to consider an investigation into these unethical violations and a task force be created for educational and to help people who are in trouble of these situations. And I'd be honored to help in this thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Mr. Stephen Popitak. Um, I just want to give, also want to give thanks and gratitude for this commission actually being here and being able to, to be able to be to bear witness to our testimonials as well. I think it's really a, a credit to Obama, even though I'm against a lot of his policies, that he would actually create this type of commission. I do hope that it goes beyond these walls, though, and actually creates some type of implementation for change. Um, I, I can speak for hours about my own personal experiences and some of the and some of the more modern versions of the of projects that, that several people have talked about. Uh, my harassment started back in 1997, uh, more from a remote influencing perspective. I had made contacts in different military, industrial uh, complex, uh, uh, basically in different agencies. I had, uh, had received microwave harassment actually on and off for a number of years where they were trying to project images of suicide and uh, various states of basically emotional mood management. This was confirmed to me in 2001 by a contact at the National Security Agency. He worked in community, he's still, I'm not sure if he's retired at this point, but I talked to him recently. He worked in communications intelligence division of NSA for 25 years at, the, this is right after 9-11, a month after, when he came to meet with me at my, at my part-time job at the time. And he basically was working at a kind of like, an, uh, in that division, he was working, he was examining different types of abuses that were going on in the NSA. And he stated to me personally that my case fell within the realm of potential abuse in the agency that he was investigating. Uh, he, at this point, he's, he's still involved in the agency. I can provide his name and information more in private, though, because I don't want to get in trouble for, for, for over disclosure of someone who's still active in that, in that uh, agency, especially with the technology they have. But anyway, he basically also confirmed to me that what I experienced in terms of some, just the tip of the iceberg of part of my experiences with the emotional projection, he said that that was very common and that they were using microwaves because they had taken really advanced EEG images of people in different emotional states, mapped those digital brainwave uh, signatures, emotional clusters of people feeling different emotional states. They said that they can take those, those digital brainwave signatures, piggyback on a certain bandwidth of microwaves as a carrier wave, and they can target people worldwide without need for a local transmitter. He confirmed all that to me and said that they use satellite to target anybody they want, and it's a very common procedure within this portion of the NSA, which is, her which is horrendous that they actually let this going on. So I think the, uh, the idea of the, of the non-consensual abuse needs to be extended to more of the covert military establishment. And, there, and then later on in 2003, when I was getting more advanced uh, projections with like multi-layered, not just from my 
conscious feelings, but into my unconscious. He said that they were trying to fine tune their projections on me to see how I could block it out. Because I work in more in the consciousness field of meditation, alternative spirituality. So I do different techniques to help people block out some of these frequencies by taking control of their own biophotonic fields. I've also made contact with many scientists over the years, underground scientists who used to work in various intelligence areas, who've also confirmed this and much more, much more beyond technologies, where they use longitudinal electromagnetic wave technologies, technology that Tesla first developed, which is also could be used in alternative healing. Uh, I'm also aware of a friend I know who upstate who's been curing people of different illnesses using this technology, but he worked in the Pentagon for decades and confirmed some of this technology is also being used for more, more of the nefarious activities. I can go on for hours, but I'll probably provide written testimony. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Rodney Biddle. Mr. Rodney Biddle. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. I'm here today uh, representing the organization and also myself under uh, technological, uh, the technological advancements of uh, industries, whether it be medical or military. Uh, I've been under attack for some 25 years, mentally and physical abuse, psychological abuse, uh, pornography. Also have uh, always negative, as this gentleman was talking about, suicidal uh, attempts uh, in the mental, uh, put through uh, torturous things such as uh, mental abuse caused by a car accident. It's maybe one of your family members dying, maybe your sister or your brother. Uh, committee members, I ask you to think for a second and acknowledge that this does happen and it is relevant to today and it is relevant to the bioethical issue committees. And uh, one thing I would like to mention that uh, might give you some insight to just how detailed and how uh, powerful this is. Uh, I was in my living room one day and uh, this computer came in, the interface of this computer, and it said something to me about it because I was called it satanic and, uh, and uh, antichrist for the ugly, nasty, evil torture that it was putting me through. It dropped a program into me, and this would have been the military side of this computer, I'm sure, that was a martial arts technique that I performed to exact precision where I picked up my coffee table in my living room with my leg, wrapped it around it, smashed it into the wall. Uh, if you don't think these are detailed, that they don't get information from every individual that we're talking about, this is how detailed and how powerful these programs can be. Anyone here could be manipulated at any time. Do not think anyone's above it. We need regulations. We need laws. We need things to, people to look into these regulations. Human experimentation has been going on for years. What you're talking about earlier, I appreciate the committee, uh, but what we're talking about is so hog tech, so advanced, we're not talking hospitals. We're not talking people, uh, people in psych wards, but it does include those. We're talking high tech warfare here. We're talking technological advancements beyond the human comp comprehension of the mind. We're way, way behind the comprehension of the mind. That's why they're so far ahead. That's why they can get away with it. There's no regulations, no laws against this type of human experimentation. Whether it's in the United States of America that it's happened, these corporations are outside the United States of America producing these weaponry and doing these studies, we need regulations. It's way above, I, I believe, possibly pharmaceutical companies are helping with this research, backing it. There's no regulation on it. There's the big money people. You know, I realize you guys are regulating that stuff. But there's big money in this medical research. I think they're buying it and selling it, and they're killing us. They're killing you. We, we appreciate your story uh, because I, I, you can talk to that firsthand. Some of these broader allegations, maybe, maybe I've got the crux of what your, your concern is, okay? Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Mr. Derek Robinson. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, good afternoon uh, to the commission, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to, to, uh, to speak to you this afternoon. Um, my name is Derek Robinson, and I'm president of an organization called Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. And I represent uh, many of uh, the people that are in this room today, as well as hundreds of those across the, con across the U.S., uh, and millions uh, many thousands uh, across the U.S. who are not in our organization who are being targeted with, without their knowledge. 
as well as those worldwide millions, uh, thousands, uh, and speaking of thousands of, of people here uh, in China who sent me their statement to give to you. Uh, I've heard a lot uh, this, uh, this afternoon about, um, about uh, IRBs, about uh, ethics uh, versus, uh, um, sorry, my, my thoughts aren't coming together right now. But anyway, but um, what we want to express to you is that human experimentation by this government is happening today. That there are many thousands of people, whether they are realizing or not, are being affected, and that um, that we would like to express to you that uh, this is a situation that needs to be addressed uh, by a um, a task force, by a commission, because we are we are not hearing because this, uh, this the government is not hearing from those who are being uh, victimized by this by the experimentation. Um, what you are speaking about tonight is very relevant in terms of those who are. Um, being experimented on, uh, but what about uh, feedback from those who um, are being experimented on, who have no place to go, who need, who need a voice, who are suffering like these people here, who are suffering like those across this country. Uh, there are the, what you're hearing tonight is just a, a minuscule amount of what I hear on a daily basis. This is a widespread government program that is not consensual that is affecting many, many thousand, and it's growing daily. And it, the, the commission, I would hope, would express to Barack Obama that non-consensual, federally funded human research programs are, on, are going on and need to be addressed. And also, the victims of those programs need a way to file a complaint, to talk to a commission, to talk to a task force about what is happening to them. Thank you. Mr. Robert Labudia. Thank you for having me. My name is Robert Labudia. I'm an eyewitness and victim that people are tampering with and retaliating against, and this is my public comment concerning non-compliances of bioethics and other codes of ethics. These non-compliances are a grave, pre-planned, premeditated breach of international conventions and are intentional and heinous atrocities of war crimes against humanity, domestic terrorism, domestic espionage, and genocide. We, the victims, are a group of U.S. nationals that are getting directly affected to the extent of attempted murder, that is, genocide. The means and methods that are being abused are electronics and directed energy that unlawfully harness human subjects for unlawful experiments, research, and other exercise, the unlawful practicing and patterning of organized war crimes, the means are electromagnetic, radio frequency, psychotronic fields, voice to skull techniques, and other energy weapons that harness unwilling humans against our will and criminally conspires against our rights. They are used with remote viewers as one of the means of unlawful surveillance with criminal intent to terrorize, injure, harass, intimidate, and murder. That's called stalking with the same intent. Also, unlawful human service trafficking that steals an individual's bioenergy signature through signal splashing unwilling human subjects, then using synthetic telepathy, that's a theft of human intangible property and other directed energies causing physical and mental pain, suffering, and trauma. These perpetrators torture victims in their physical control. This is cruel, unusual treatment and a terroristic hate crime that damages the subject's health, finances, dignity, employability, reputation, and human property while disrupting our mental faculties. Where is the equal protection of law that is constitutionally ours? Is, not unethical, is it not unethical to keep that from us? Our country's government helped develop these technologies, and they are forbidden to use on U.S. nationals. That is law. To not execute laws concerning these, crime is, I'm sorry, concerning these crimes is seditious conspiracy and treason. These unlawful acts are in direct violation of UN General Assembly resolutions, international humanitarian laws, and a slew of U.S. laws and is completely unethical and irresponsible. We rightfully seek disclosure through prosecution. Thank you for having me. Good day. Uh, Ms. Lynn Barenberg. I'm Lynn Barenberg, and I had prepared... Um 
a commentary, but I find I'm not going to give it. I couldn't put it together in my head for 90 seconds. I'm another person who's being used as for non-consensual human experimentation. Stanford Research Institute, Lockheed Martin, and UC Berkeley are the criminal organizations and university that um, are involved in this. I can't speak publicly. I, anyway, there are no ethics. There's no morality, rules, regulations. They're able to sidestep an IRB, an Institutional Review Board, for God's sakes. I mean, there's a lot going on you people don't know about. You know nothing, and it's coming your way, you know? These nanotechnology institutes that are attached to national laboratories. UC Berkeley has its own molecular foundry. You need to look into this stuff because it's going mainstream. It's not just us. You're going to be affected, your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren. You need to take a look at what's going on here. We may not be the most eloquent speakers, but um, don't thoroughly discount us. Uh, Mr. Timothy White. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ted Gunderson. Uh, I'd like to point. Mr. Gunderson is not here. Is that the? I, I was told that I couldn't speak for him. I was told I could, and then they told me today I couldn't. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to. Would you prefer to speak for him? That's fine. I am. I'm going to say something. Go for it. Wait. Ted sure. Gunderson. Uh, and your name, I'm sorry. I'm Peter Rosenholm. Ted Gunderson was in charge of the FBI of Los Angeles, and we had written up a speech, but I was told I couldn't present it, so I don't have it. Oh. But he basically says that this is all going down. Uh, mind control is destroying our nation. Uh, and stuff like that. Honestly, I was told I couldn't do it, so uh, I'm not prepared. But Ted was a top FBI agent, and he would like to support us. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Th those are the ones. Those are the names that we had scheduled uh, for the uh, uh, microphone. Hey, please, please stay there. Are there others from the audience uh, that, that uh, we've got? A few more minutes. Let's do it. Why don't I just, uh, would you rather just give us something rather than speak? Is that your? No, I would like to speak. Please, please go to the microphone and identify yourself. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Leslie Crawford. I'm here from the state of Michigan. I wanted to speak about um, biotechnology applications being utilized on my person. I have um, medical reports showing eye damage being done to my eyes. Mm. My eyes does not have a mirror image. I also have nano wiring inside my eyes. I have pictures of the actual implants from the eye doctor once enlarging the nano implants you will see a copy of the actual particles in my eyes I have CAT scans, MRIs and PETs showing wiring, nano wiring in my head this is my brain it's straight from the right side to the left side of my head I also have implants in my chin, in the chin region on both sides. One side shows a wire, the other side shows the actual implant. Implant particle devices coming down through here. Projectiles of the nanoparticles on the side of my head in large pictures. 
these crimes is happening in America. This is a domestic problem, not only international. The victims is not being just victimized individually. We are being victimized and our family members as well. Gang stalking, gang stalking tactics and harassment was utilized. Leslie, I, I think your comments reinforce uh, mu much of what we've heard. And if you don't mind, I'd like to make room for others at the microphone now, since it seems uh, uh, to be reinforcing. Uh, Juan, I'd ask you to pick somebody. This gentleman right here. No. I'm sorry, who's been waiting? Oh, yeah, please. Okay. My name is Eugenia Derden. I'm sorry, uh, Eugenia? Eugenia Derden, yes. Uh, everything I've heard from this commission and this panel about ethics, they were um, mostly talk about pharmaceuticals research, but I haven't heard anyone talking about a psychotronic weapon research, a bioelectromagnetic weapon research. Who in this, uh, in this panel are, are familiar with a psychotronic weapon? Raise your hand, please. Who of you know about psychotronic weapons? Any one of you? Psychotronic bioelectromagnetic weapons. Are you familiar with that? Not at all. No? Okay. In, the, in this audience, is anybody familiar with a psychotronic weapon? Okay. Okay. The audience is familiar with that, and I think that in order for a panel or a commission to be able to help this problem and this issue, we'll have to have more knowledge on what psychotronic weapons are. I am physically linked, leashed from my neck to the electromagnetic power of, the, of one of the weapons that is being used against me. I get tortured day and night. At night is with nightmares and all kinds of dreams that I don't want in my head. And throughout the day is my body they brought with my neurological system so they do anything to my body. Sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's, um, it makes me sick. It makes me want to throw up. Sometimes I feel I'm going to have a heart attack. They do all kinds of things like jitter pulsating with the electromagnetic frequencies. They use a program called virtual reality that makes them feel that they are right in there in front of you. And as you know, as you know, electricity travels as fast as the light. And you know how fast that travels, right? How, how fast does it travel? Anybody? 186,000 miles a Very second. Very good. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you 86, what, though. We, need to, we do need to hear the... Hear so I would appreciate if people. you get more, in, um, more aware and, and read. There is in the Internet, there is all kinds of information now on psychotronic weapons so that you will probably be able to help us after you have a better knowledge of what these weapons are and what these weapons do. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kevin Canada, and I, I can't say it's a joy to be here because I would much rather be someplace else besides here. Uh, I would much rather be some, not a targeted individual, which I have been for the past eight years. Um, I believe my nightmare started at a VA hospital. Uh, 1998, I got very involved in some political stuff, and I won't go into the details, but I became what's called a targeted individual, and my life has changed uh, unbelievably. Gang stalking, electromagnetic weapons, directed energy weapons. I even, some of these people even came in my house and jerry-rigged electricity and I'm being electrocuted on everything. My appliances, I, I've been told that they can turn your appliances into weapons against you. So it's become a nightmare. I think I've been implanted at a VA hospital. I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I know I'm, I'm being watched everywhere I go, surveilled, tracked like an animal. We need help. We need to know. We need to be able to go someplace to find out if we have been implanted. What kind of technology are they using against us? We have done nothing but be try to get involved. For me to get involved to make this a better country, and for that we've stepped on some toes. And now we are targeted individuals. And I'm sure most of the people here are innocent and are, are being targeted for reasons they really don't know. So we need your help. And I think the the suggestion of having a TI on this commission I think is a, a great suggestion. We need somebody who knows what's happening to us, helping us. 
But uh, we, need to, we need the technology to find out if we've been targeted, if we've been implanted. And because they can get to, these intelligence agencies can get to any doctor, they can get to anybody that we see who might possibly help us, lawyers, attorneys, cops, you name it, they use it to harass us and attack us, and we need your help. Thank you, Kevin. Hold on now. Hold on. We're going to go this way. Hello, I'm Rose Kapinski from Madison, Wisconsin. I know you, you would like to hear a little bit about my story. Often when I'm with people, uh, the perpetrators leave me alone, perhaps to make it look like it's my imagination. And then often when I am alone, uh, they start hurting me, they start fatiguing me. Um, I wanted to say quickly um, to help the light bulb go off for you, uh, there's always been a continual... Um, mysterious missing amounts of billions or trillions uh, uh, in the Pentagon budget and uh, try to think where that money might be going. There has been a story about, oh, the naughty contractors charging $100 for a hammer. I believe that may be a cover story. Um, I think that, um, as you were saying, uh, I think that uh, the contractors for the Pentagon have gotten very proliferative. That's not what you were saying, but you were talking about, you know, shutting down or dealing with uh, egregious or abusive um, situations in research. And I want to say, think about it for a minute. You're, you're very intelligent. You, do you think, in the past, things have gone on. Do you think there is nothing going on right now? Really? Zero? Zero? Zilcho? Come on. That would be foolish. That would be, excuse me, that would be somewhat uh, 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 st stupid, I'm sorry. That would be um, deluded. And uh, read Galashek in the name of science to hear about the history. Read current things like Nick Begich, Controlling the Human Mind, subtitle Tools for Political Control or Tools for Peak Performance. And again, I think it's just an issue of money, 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 and it's gotten out of control. Thank you. I think this is going to be our last. I think this is going to be our last one. I'll tell you what. Did, did, I want to take. Is there a woman right behind you? We'll take you also. Why don't we do these last two questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Liliana Connor, and I have also been subjected to these technologies. I think that the Commission is studying the issue of informed consent and that is a, a right, a human right that we all should have even if these are classified operations. All persons should have the right of informed consen consent so that they could either decline participating of such studies uh, or otherwise opt out if, if uh, they are informed at a later date that they have been subjected to, to these studies. And uh, non-consensual experimentation is a total violation of human rights. It should be outlawed, you know, any non-consensual experimentation. People should not have, have to be subjected like this and, and it would be important if you could recommend to President Obama uh, to, to change the regulation of informed consent to include even classified operations on persons and to outlaw and forever ban any non-consensual experimentation in the United States. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I did not get your name. Liliana Connor. Liliana Connor. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Letitia Peters. I'm Trenton, New Jersey. I spoke last time in March, and since then, yeah. my, my life has, <laughs> has gone downward. And it's a shame that we are Americans, and we just want to be treated like Americans. And we are part of a non-consensual human experimentation, which uses highly advanced electronic technology without our informed consent or knowledge. And we are speaking for thousands of American citizens. We do not want apology. We want justice, and we want justice now. I am requesting 
that the Presidential Commission conduct an investigative hearing on non-consensual human experimentation, and I do have credible evidence. I'm submitting 1,158 videos and pictures that's been occurring for the last two years. I'm also presenting 10 attachments, which includes my 14-page public comment, plus um, Robert S. public comments, testimonies from um, Queen Ottawa, three pages of testimony from Cindy Goldman. I actually have a 16-page letter from Japan for the Technological Crime Victims Network. Also, I have a prayer because we really need prayer. This country needs prayer because so many people have died or lost their lives, and we just want justice. And I just would like to come forward to submit all this information. Uh, please, to please feel free to give it to Val right here. I think with that, we do need to uh, wrap. It's difficult to know how to respond to, uh, to this session. Obviously, there is uh, d deep concern and, and uh, from the... Thank you all for your input. How, how many, Val, how many were on the, uh, we really got those on, on the list. I'm so sorry. I, t I tell you what, we do have ways to submit through the website. Is that correct? So we do get a chance to read that. And, but you're going to need to remind me what the site address is for everybody. Oh, it's right up there. So you can submit, uh, and you must. Please do, uh, please do submit on that, okay? So, so thank you. I think we're... Just one second. I've been done with purpose. Did you ever receive my letter? We really... Did you receive my letter, Miss? Yes, we did. Did you receive this? I would like to have the answer. Do, do you? I'm sorry. We have one. We do have yours. Yes. 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 What are you doing, Mr. Gardner? Could you receive my phone call, sir? Hold on just a moment. Just please, sir. Why don't uh, your name, sir? I'm sorry. Edward. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we? Uh, you, if we can, if shh, shh, I was just going to say, if I if I would allow some time to let you finish, and if I could indulge, if the, if the commission would indulge a little extra time in our agenda, will that satisfy your need? Thank you, sir. You have a minute and a half, please. Could we ask other people to? We need others to be seated, though, please. Everyone seated. And I'm sorry. Okay. Well, you need a microphone. We need the microphone to you. You have. Let's you were afraid to talk to me. No, no, no. no. I'm sorry. I had asked you, please, to. Uh, I was happy to give you time in front of the commission. It doesn't sound like that's what you want. Okay. Why don't you take the microphone and we we'll give you a minute and a half, like everyone else. You need the microphone so we can have a record. And please give us your name again. My name is Edward Katz. Edward I'm from Palo Alto, California. Okay. Calmly, please. Tell, tell, us, tell us your story or tell us your comment, please. Uh, we did send a uh, name Mrs. Amy Goodman. Okay. A horrifying letter, you know, which has been actually uh, supported by the video statement. Oh, my. Uh, this video statement shows up in the acts of physical torture by use of brain implants. All my family received while we moved to Berea, California, and settled right next to the uh, Stanford Research, including my children. Two boys. Two boys been implanted in optic nerves and uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, Mrs. Barbara Boxer requested headquarters FBI to provide information on these cigars, and FBI told us what we are on the experiment. Then, you know, Department of Justice, Mr. Holder, told us what we have to learn how to live with that, with torture, with robbery, and this is on tape. And Mrs. Gottman has this tape, and we beg you so many times, please, call Obama, stop torture. Obama can stop torture. Did you call? Did you call Obama? We're asking you. Stop torture. Physical torture, please. 
Yeah, please. We, we in humane torture. Just take a look at this picture, people. Okay. This is Thank you very much. Especially we came from Soviet Union. We, especially we came from, from, from the communist bloc and are here for the freedom and what they did to my it's, baby. It's a, it's a horrific, obviously horrific story. And I, and I think we can ta Val can take it. She's, she's our head staff person. Thank you very much. Ed Edward, I, I, th I thank you for your civility in... in uh, I thank you for your civility in presenting to us. And I think with that, we should stand, we should stand adjourned. So thank you all, thank you all very, very thank much for a good day. Bye-bye.